Yet, at the end of their lifetime, they switch. And instead, they, they were nice people, righteous people among the Salihin. But unfortunately, at the end of their time, you know, their heart changes. Shaitan overtake them. Their desire overtake them. And yet, they stop worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they have the bad alien, the Su'al Khatina. This is what the Prophet used to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that bad end. The Prophet, uh, once you continue building on you know, the good thing that you used to do in Ramadan, and then you learn and you keep firm on that, you teach yourself to you keep doing what you're doing, this is also a good sign of you know, the good ending. Because, مَنْ دَاوَمَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ مَا تَعَلَيْهُ وَمَنْ مَا تَعَلَى شَيْءٍ بُعْدِ عَلَيْهُ Whoever continuously doing something, this is in regard to halal or haram. When you continue doing something, especially at a young age, all the way until you get older and older, when you continue doing that you know, thing, halal or haram, then you will die on that thing, most likely. And when you die doing that behavior or that action, you will be resurrected on the day of judgment doing the same action. If you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you die, you worship worship Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah will resurrect you, you know, as you are making sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the person, the pilgrim person, when he uh, uh, make a tawaf or any type of sha'air in Mecca and then he dies there, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect him doing the same thing, making talbiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك له. Same thing when you die worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, you will you, you die subhanallah somewhere else, some some place that you were not supposed to be at, or doing haram thing, you die on that thing, on the day of judgment you will be resurrected doing the same thing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يقول يبعث كل عبد على ما مات عليه. Every single person will be resurrected do one what he used to do when he died. You, whatever, again, whatever you, of action that you used to do, you would be resurrected doing the same thing. That's why we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to do good deeds until the last breath we take. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Him to resurrect us doing the halal thing. Now, you know, take our lives and our souls and we are while we were doing something haram. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, the husn al-khatima or the good ending. I say this word and I pray for Allah to give you the peace and the peace of the Lord. Astaghfirullah, he is the Lord of the Lord. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. ومن والاهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد هذه القادمة there was this servant um, girl who was sold from her master to new people and her previous master they used to get up at night they used to do extra ibadat they used to do all these extra nawafil and ibadat and siyam trying to gain you know get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain the pleasure of Allah azza wa jal. When, when he sold her to the new people, she saw that the new people, they only do the minimum ibadat, meaning the five um, salawat, the siyam of Ramadan, you know, uh, giving the zakat and so on. They only do the bare minimum. Then she said, She said, oh, words to my previous master. He only sold, he sold me to these people. Those people, they just do, they just do the minimum requirement. They only pray, they only fast Ramadan, they give sadaqah. These are the minimum. To owe to him because he sold me to these people. Imagine the way she is thinking, you know, these people, her new owner, only pray, you know, they pray the five prayers, they give sadaqah, they fast Ramadan, but she was not satisfied with that. She wanted to be owned and to, to be to serve other people who they have extra ibadat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you have that extra ibadat, you try to gain closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the, the, the righteous people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them 
his pleasure and inshallah when he is satisfied with them he will grant them al jannah inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala so how do i stay firm on doing the ibadat that i used to do in ramadan i'm used to do you know uh, the extra ibadat in ramadan firm on my salah on reading the quran every day and giving sadaqah as much as, as i can how do i stay on that the first thing is to fix our hearts by doing two things we fix our heart by doing the extra ta'at, by loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by having a sincere ibadat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and removing any, anybody or anything from our heart beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we only worship Him sincerely for Him. Some of us, you know, they love their job too much, they don't want to lose their job. They stay there for 12, 13, 15, 16 hours. And for their salah, they just, if they have time, they would just go pray two, three minutes and run back. And some of them, they leave their salah until the end of the time. Some of them, they don't work, they don't pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? This is being, you know, losing their money and their job and their Lord. You may not say that, but they actually doing it. Once you're not praying and you're not given your sadaqat and you're not worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet you are committed with a full commitment to your to your money, to your business, then that, that means yeah, you love that money more, you love, you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is a bad sign. So we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love Allah azza wa jal. The second thing is that we have to uh, remove any animosity in our heart, any hate in our heart, any problem that we have with anybody, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, we have to remove that from our hearts. We have to clean our heart, to cleanse our heart by reading the Quran, by dua, by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and by understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves al-qalb al-salim, the clean, pure heart, the good heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned when he said in, in regard to Ibrahim, when he, meaning Ibrahim, came to meet his Lord with the salim heart, with the pure heart, a heart that is not full of evil, that is not full of hate, that is not full of jealousy of others. This is the heart that we should have as Muslim, a sound heart, a comfortable heart, a, you know, a heart that is, has a sakina in it, because we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have comfort in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other thing we should do in order to keep, you know, steady fast on our ta'at is whatever you do of the, the ta'at, continue doing it. Even if it was a small thing. If it was only a two rak'ah, you do it before you go to sleep. Even if it's a two rak'ah, you know, you get up at two or three o'clock in the morning, you know, you use the bathroom, make a wudu and do the, these two rak'ah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَإِنَّ أَحَبَّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَا دَاوَمَ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنْ قَلْ the best deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu said, the best deeds to Allah is that is continuously being done. Even if it was a small thing. You are, you know, used to do those two rak'at before you go to sleep or two rak'at, you know, at midnight or what have you, anytime. Or you used to give one single dollar every day for a single, for anybody, any person, any needy person. Don't say this is way too little thing Allah will not accept you. No, this is, could be your ticket to Al-Jannah. You know, when Aisha said, you know, when two, a woman came in to knock on her door with two, she has two, two little girls, and she was begging for, for anything from Aisha, the wife of the Prophet So Aisha said, you know, I have nothing except, you know, three, three dates. So she went inside and she grabbed those three dates and she gave the mother those three dates. The mother gave one day to the other, the daughter, and another one to the other daughter, and she kept one. The daughter, they were so hungry, they both ate their date quickly, and they looked up to their mother. The mother, she sacrificed, even though she's hungry, she took that date and she split it in half, and she gave each one of them a half. Then she left. Then Aisha, when the Prophet ﷺ came back to his house, she told him what had happened of that woman when she, you know, she sacrificed and she gave half that date, half for the, uh, one of the daughter and the other one to the other one. The Prophet ﷺ says, you know, that could be 
what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save her from the hellfire because of that one day. And then he said, nara tamra. And he said, protect yourself, guard yourself against the hellfire, even if you give half a day. So imagine, you know, you give every day at one dollar or five dollars, whatever you give, continue doing it and do not stop. You make a two rak'at, you know, a volunteer prayer, day or night, make sure you keep doing it and not say this is a little thing, it will not affect me, it will affect you with a big, you know, in a huge way. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it, that will be your ticket to Al-Jannah inshallah ta'ala. Also, we have to make sure that we have dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always make dua to Allah azza wa jal. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, al dua of sulah al-mu'min. The supplication is the weapon of the mu'min. You always raise your hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking for everything halal that you want. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer you. You know, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Rupa ash'at al-aghbar. You know, don't think of yourself as who am I? If I raise my hand, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer my supplication. The Prophet sallallahu said, Rubba ash'atin aghbar, law rafa'a yadayhi, law aqsama ala Allahi la abarra. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, maybe think of a man who is ash'at, his, his hair is disheveled, he is not, he's a poor man, a poor person, his clothing is t- torn up, he's, he's nothing. But if he raises his hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he swore on Allah, Meaning, oh Allah, you will do that thing for me. He swears on 